At this stage of your training, it's a good time to agree on how you'll control the airplane. Power, or throttle position, should be by means of adjusting the rate of descent, what your VSI reads. The airplane's pitch attitude, controlled by the joystick, is your means of maintaining a specific airspeed. In a climb, you'll always use the maximum allowable power, usually full throttle, while adjusting the airplane's attitude, using the joystick from the airspeed desired. Since you're familiar with the procedure for making climbs and descents, let's combine these with the skills we developed in turns. Reading the altimeter. This picture shows a typical altimeter found in most airplanes. It has two hands and a dot that represents the airplane's height in tens and thousands of feet. The shorter, thicker hand represents altitude in thousands of feet. The long, thin hand represents the airplane's altitude in hundreds of feet. The easiest way to read an altimeter is to read it just like you would a clock. For instance, the altimeter A in this picture, if altimeter A in this picture were a clock, what time would it read? Yes, it would read 3 o'clock. Since altimeter A is in a clock, it shows an altitude of 3,000 feet. The long, hun hundreds hand points to zero hundred feet, and the medium, thousands hand, points to 3,000 feet. If altimeter B were a clock, what time would it say? It would read 3.30, or half past 3 o'clock. As an altimeter, it, would, it reads half past 3,000, or 3,500 feet. The long, hundreds hand points to 500 feet, and the medium, thousands hand points to between 3,000 and 4,000 feet. The altitude is 500 feet past 3,000 feet, or 3,500 feet. What time would it be if, the, if altimeter C were a clock? It looks like it would be somewhere around a quarter to seven. More precisely, the long hundreds hand shows 800 feet, and the medium thousands hand points a little shy of 7,000 feet. Therefore, the altimeter reads 80 feet past 6,000 feet, or 6,800 feet. Not too tough, is it? Try reading altimeter D like a clock. What time is it? Yes, it looks like it's 3 o'clock, but take a closer look at that very small dot. That dot points a little past the value of 1, meaning you need to add 10,000 feet onto the value shown by the altimeter's medium and long hands. Thus, altimeter D indicates an altitude of 13,000 feet. Things are turning up. Suppose we want to combine climbs and descents with turns. Specifically, let's examine how to enter a 20-degree right banking turn while establishing a climb, thus rolled into straight and level flight. Here's how you might do it. First, establish the climb. Increase the pitch to a 13 degree nose up attitude, as shown in this picture. Add full power, and then trim. Then you'll roll into the desired bank. The secret here is to use the attitude indicator's orange ball as the pitch reference. Since the orange wings won't be all aligned, aligned with the horizon, use the orange ball as a pitch reference, and use the attitude indicator's orange pointer as the bank reference. When climbing and descending too, it's the best it's best to begin leveling off when you're within 50 feet of your desired altitude. A 50-foot lead helps prevent outshooting or undersho overshooting or undershooting the target altitude. If you want to level off at 4,000 feet, then enter level flight when you read 3,950 feet on your altimeter. At this point, you'd lower the nose and roll out into a straight and level flight attitude. Yes, the power is still set at maximum, and that's good. Let the airplane accelerate to cruise speed, unless you specifically want to fly to slower speed. Then reduce speed to a cruise setting of approximately 2200 RPM. Once the airspeed stabilizes, trim for this attitude, as shown in this picture. Well, that's how you do it. Believe it or not, that wasn't necessarily, necessarily a simple maneuver. Remember, the secret is going from one attitude to another, such as from straight and level flight to a climb, is to do it like a waltz. One, two, three. Attitude, power, and trim. You adjust the attitude to a known value that puts your airplane in the ballpark for a climb, 13 degrees for a climb at 80 knots. Then you adjust the power. You'll climb with full power in our lessons airplane. And finally, you'll provide enough trim to hold this attitude. The formula of attitude, power, and trim is the secret when making any pitch change. Time for a turndown. Suppose you're flying at 4,000 feet and want to descend to 2,500 feet while on a left turn at 20 degrees of bank. This maneuver it a little... This, to make this maneuver a little more challenging, do it at 90 knots. Here's how it's done. First, you roll into a 20 degree turn to the left. Then you reduce power to flight idle. Flight idle is the condition where, you, where the throttle is, pull, is pulled aft to its stop and the engine produces idle power. Next, you lower the nose to an attitude that you suspect gives you an airspeed of 90 knots. You'll notice that when you reduce power, the nose will automatically want to lower on its own. Therefore, you'll probably have have to apply a little back pressure on the joystick to keep it from descending too quickly. 
Since 3 degrees positive, upward pitch gives you 80 knots, perhaps to, you attain 90 knots at 1 degree positive pitch, a slightly lower attitude. Remember, because you're in a turn, you use the attitude indicators, orange or ball, as the pitch reference, as shown in this picture. When you're at 2,550 feet, a 50 foot lead t above 2,500, put the airplane in the attitude for straight and level flight. Then, you increase power to a cruising setting of 2,300 RPM and trim when the airspeed air air stabilizes. Attitude, power, and trim, right? Now you know how to make climbs, turns, and descents, as well as perform straight and level flight. Yes, you should understand the basics. Our next lesson deals with flying at slower speeds, just like the speeds you'll fly at, at during a landing approach. You'll learn all the th little things that allow you to get it down on the runway. The pinwheel effect. A child's pinwheel spins as a result of air blowing on it. In case you haven't noticed, airplane propellers are nothing more than a big pinwheel for big kids. The pinwheel effect is responsible for RPM, revolutions per minute. Values that change from their present position as the airspeed changes. For instance, whenever you set the throttle to a new RPM, the RPM reading will change as the airplane's airspeed changes. Why? The propeller reacts to changing airspeed like a pinwheel reacts to wind. This, this spins the prop artificially fast or prevents it from spinning to its full potential until the airspeed stabilizes. This often requires resetting the RPM once or perhaps twice to achieve the final setting you want. The pinwheel effect is associated with fixed pitch propellers, which is a kind like the one on the airplanes that we use for our lessons. Later on, you'll learn about constant speed propellers that change their pitch to maintain, to maintain a specific RPM. Well, that's all I got for you for lesson three. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask our Ask your instructor or another instructor or turn to the forums.